let's get into the standings as we head into Las Vegas. Martin Truex Jr. By the way, these are entirely new standings since I had to basically re-simulate the entire first two races. We finished last in both of those uh, simply because getting the results back to the way they were would have been damn near impossible. But this is the new standings. These are the ones we're rolling with going forward. Martin Truex Jr., after winning the Daytona 500 in the re-simulation, leads the points from Corey LaJoy, Ryan Blaney, uh, who also, he won the uh, Atlanta simulation, where we also finished last. Kyle Busch, Brad Keselowski, Denny Hamlin, Chase Elliott, Eric Jones, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. will round out the top ten as we enter the Pennzoil 400 at Las Vegas. Well, we're qualifying for Las Vegas. Goal time is a 30.4. Our best was a 30.9 in practice. Mile and a half, it's just, pole is never really much of a hope, is it? Let's go. Away we go for qualifying for the Pennzoil 400. I feel like I should at least be able to change the wedge. This, this update was so lazy. single lap qualifying here at Las Vegas as it is everywhere other than Daytona and Talladega yeah it really wants to dance around with this default setup but then when I took the tiniest little bit of wedge out of it it seemed a lot more planted See where we wind up. Shouldn't be too bad. Good bit slower. 31.0, good for 14. So we'll take that. Not bad. Let's uh, take a look at the order for the Pencil 400. Our teammate William Byron, who in the Daytona 500 we actually ran, wasn't even there because we did that in career mode. Uh, he is on pole here today. Joey Logano in second. Those illegal gloves, man, helping him out. Kyle Larson in third. Kurt Busch, who has not been much of a factor at all through the first two races of the year. In fourth, Cole Custer is the highest qualifying Stuart Haas car. Chase Elliott sixth. Another Stuart Haas car and Chase Briscoe seventh. We had a battle with him in the Xfinity race yesterday. Kyle Busch eighth. Daniel Suarez, a track house appearance inside the top ten. Denny Hamlin will qualify tenth. Take a look at the rest of the order. Good qualifying effort out of Noah Gragson in the 62. He starts 11th. We sit in 14th. Sandwich between Kozlowski and Dylan. <clears throat> Both of the RFK cars in uh, the top 20. Busher has not been much of a factor at all. Uh, Austin Dylan 15th. Stenhouse, who's top 10 in points through two races in 18th. Blaney, Reddick, Truex, and the rest of the grid. Anyone qualify miserably bad? Christopher Bell, it's a pretty poor effort. That Gibbs car is just not going very well for him. Harrison Burton back down towards the bottom of the order yet again. Greg Biffle in the 34, the, new, the NY Racing car. <clears throat> that's how, That's got its own story. IRL this weekend, that thing is a disaster. If that, that, that car does not start in park, I will be amazed. Loris Hesemans in 35th. Corey LaJoy, who enters this race second in the points, qualifies 36th. That Spire car is starting to settle back down to where you'd think it would be, and a rough qualifying run for Todd Gilliland, who, in the front row motorsports car, you'd think could be able to out-qualify guys like Hill and Yaley. And Priest, Ware, McLeod, all these guys down here. Shocking effort out of Todd Gilliland. Pennzoil 400 at Las Vegas, and Corey LaJoy, rough practice and a rough qualifying session is at the back of the field. Todd Gillen, unexpectedly slow, and Morris Hesemans, I think, is the only one that uh, drops to the back of the field after he crashed in qualifying, pulled a Ryan Priest. As we are underway for the Pennzoil 400, 
at Las Vegas. Let's see what we can do here today. Good run off to start. That's 62 hanging in there. Into fifth gear already. Fifth gear is something you have to use here at this track. Hamlin all squirrely. I don't know if that's because we got in the back of them. The car feels a little tight. Packed up with these other cars here early. An aggressive move by Hamlin. I tried to follow him down. Really shouldn't have. As we are into Kurt Busch. Hopefully he's able to hold on to that. Appears he is. Little tight here in the early stages of the run. Not a big fan of that. I think we will probably drop the wedge as this race goes along. Great toe off the back of Kyle Larson, but it's so tight right now. Can't really take advantage of it. Three Hendrick cars smacked in here together. Larson in front of us. We have to get off the throttle. Byron's still leading, so all the Hender cars are up front right now. Got to find a way past Larson. I feel like we're definitely faster. Harvick was down there, and I didn't quite realize as Larson drops back a little ways. Dived it into the corner. Got Hamlin in front of us. Can't make up his mind on which line he wants to run. Briscoe checked up as he's made some nice moves to get to the front early. Now we're back to the bottom, which is where we prefer to be. Pushing off the corner a little bit. Had to get off of it to not get into Briscoe. And there's that draft again. Ooh. Had a nice entry to the corner, but Logano a little bit slow as he's stuck in behind Byron. I don't really want to force it three wide here early. But I guess that's what we're going to do. Hendrick, one, two, three right now. Byron, Elliott, and ourselves. Thirty-four to go here in stage one. Byron changed lanes, kind of checked up Elliott. We're a little bit tight again. As Harvick has followed us all the way up to the front. I don't really want to push Byron. A little bit hesitant to push the AI at a track like this. Not sure how well they'll uh, receive that. Being patient in the early stages here. I say that as we're taking a three wide. Harvick kind of chopped our nose a little bit. A little bit scary. And now it's really tightened up. Really had to get off the gas on the entry to turn one there. As Chase Elliott's trying to check out. I can't get to the top. I guess it's three wide into turn three as well. And don't really have much of an option but to back out of that. We've been absolutely killing the Xfinity and truck races we've done thus far. Two for two in both series. But have yet to win a cup race. Had a good run into turns one and two on Hamlin, which is probably going to be the story of the day. I feel like we're going to be pretty good into one and two, not so much in three and four. But we've got a good run on Elliott here, sitting right in behind him. Can we make a move for the lead? As we cross the line to take lap nine. I'm on the outside, which is not where I'd want to make a pass. We'll see if we can make it work. Well, we got to run. Level with Elliott. Oh, now we're up way too high. <clears throat> way too high for my car, anyway. These default setups, I really don't feel like are optimized for anything other than the bottom as we got contact with Hamlin. He holds on to it. We lose a couple places in that whole thing. And now we're three wide on the exit of turn two. Getting into the wall early. 
but no damage. Have yet to lead a lap, and we're uh, falling back a little bit. Well, let's just hope it was because of that contact with Hamlin. I can't even... He can't even clear us. There he finally does, so we can drop down to where I'd rather be. Dive into turn one is where we're going to make up a lot of time in this race, I think. It's Byron and Elliott. Too wide for the lead through three and four. We back off. We should have a nice run here off of turn four. Got a tow from Harvick. I guess we're going down to the apron to try and make a pass, and we do. But I can't really dive it in like I had been, so not the greatest run through one and two there. We finally get some clean track as this car is bucking around all over the place. Elliott's going to have another run at us on the inside, but we were just in the way enough. But now we have to worry about William Byron with 27 to go in stage one. Looking to be a good day for Hendrick. Three of the four cars up here at the front end of the field. Larson dropped back a little bit after the green flag. Not sure what's up with the five car today. Well, can we settle in and run some clean laps? Who knows? Well, apparently not, because I'm going to come up and smack the wall. But the good news is, this is at least competitive. We're not, uh, we're not pulling away. Because after Atlanta, that was a big concern. Stop trying to make out with a wall, but it's... Uh, I just really like yellow. Here's Byron again. Don't want to race him too hard early, I don't think. I mean, there's just that dive into turn one. That I feel like the AI get off the throttle a lot earlier than they need to. Still no damage, even though we have kissed the wall a couple times. I'll refrain from making the Las Vegas strip joke today that I did yesterday about kissing the wall. Here comes Byron. Great run. Off of turn four. We come down and cover that off. Lap traffic could be a factor here shortly. Assuming we stay green long enough to catch them. We should. I would think that we will. Here comes Byron again, and once again he backs out. AI don't want to make the move down to the uh, apron of the tri-oval here at Las Vegas. I have no such reserves. Pushed a little bit on me. Tires only about halfway worn. We'll see what the uh, tires do throughout the run. Yesterday, the tires were wearing quicker than a uh, fuel run would uh, take us. We'll see if it's the 38 of Gilliland that's uh, back there. A couple of darker cars. I think it might actually be LaJoy and Gilliland. If I'm seeing that right, which what a points hit that would be for Corey LaJoy if he finishes all the way back here, second in points. Answering the Pennzoil 400 here as William Byron is still all over the back of us. Chase Elliott here too. And I think that is LaJoy. Well, that Spire team's got to find something. Otherwise, he'll probably drop from second all the way out of the top ten. I have no idea how that seven car did what it did in Las Vegas. Spire's a three-star team when it comes to NASCAR heat. And it is Gilliland in the front row car. And LaJoy, and as we catch, 
the back of the pack, they will be spared and get to stay on the lead lap as caution is out. <clears throat> Which means we are coming down pit road, I guess. No damage to repair. Um, feel like we did well enough <clears throat> with the car where it was. I uh, don't want to do anything crazy with a wedge. There is a car that's smoking up there in front of us. Well, back to green in Las Vegas. Hendrick Motorsports out front. Actually hold the top three spots. Still no sign of Larson after he fell back early. We'll see how our car is out front early in the run. It's when it tightens up that I think we might have some concerns. But I mean... Byron by no means uh, got gaps. He was right all over the back of us right up until the caution flew. So if only the AI were just a little bit more racy. It's bucking all over the place. This is new for me out front with this setup. Yeah, audio did some things I didn't like there. Not gapping Byron. They are, in fact, catching us. I'm obsessed with hitting the apron, apparently. Which is not going to help matters. Elliot, or Byron Elliot, Hamlin, and Harvick. Round out the top five. Twenty-five of thirty-nine here in stage one. Fourteen laps to go, so that caution allows us to avoid a green flag pit stop for the moment. I'm certain we'll make one at some point. And I do think the AI will likely pit at the end of the stage and if they do so will I. I don't want to be off sequence with them especially this early I don't really think there's much of an advantage there stages just kill pit strategy as Chase Elliott is all over the back of us now finally caught up so I feel like the AI can just hang with us they don't really at least early indications are they haven't been able to pass us But I think that's just because of how I, the line I run off of the corner. Like, they have a run that they could take to the high side if they really wanted to, and they just don't, as I think we're getting to the stage where the car is a little bit tighter. So we do open up the bottom for Chase Elliott. He's got a nose in there, but we'll get the run off of turn two. Well, maybe I just took an awful entry in there into turn one last time. Byron back to fifth after the pit stop. And a few laps green afterwards as it's now Hamlin in third. I'd imagine we'll see Larson back at the top five at some point. The Hendrick cars really are as fast here at Vegas as... It appears. Haven't really tightened up yet. Ten to go in stage one. Wow, bad time for frame lag. Whoa, lordy. For the moment, 
We've lost the spot to Chase Elliott, and actually, we come back on the outside here. Can we get him at the line? Yes. Elliott will not lead the lap. Really chopped the nose of my teammate there, but just trying to get a solid lead back again. I don't think rivals and um, all that is really much of a thing in championship mode, thankfully. We actually have company from Kevin Harvick with a run from hell off of turn four with eight to go in the stage. With the pit stop falling where it did, I do wonder if... Uh, I don't know if the AI is quite going to fall off before the end of this stage. So they may have a run at us. Remember, both the Xfinity and truck races, it's come down to... A late pit stop where I think the AI have been taking only two or I can't imagine they, they're able to take no tires. That's actually put us behind and we had to chase down Chase Briscoe yesterday to win the Xfinity race. Passed him with a lap and a half to go. And if it wasn't for some lap traffic, I don't think we win that race. So, with the way that it's shaped up all weekend, it'll be interesting to see if that's how it's going to go here today as well. There might even be, depending on the length of stage three, there might even be two pit stops in that final stage. Kevin Harvick and the Stuart Haas Ford has found his way into second spot. Nice entry into turn one there. And good exit through turn two. Got ourselves a little bit of a buffer. But it's three and four where we struggle just a little bit. And especially that time, that was not a great three and four there. Here comes Harvick, but nowhere to go. Four to go in stage one. Tiny bit loose. Hasn't really been a moment where I've had to fight the car that much, which is good. Elliot, the only one that's really had a go at us. So far after we took the lead. Had a nose on us for a little bit and then dropped back again. We were able to hold him on the outside. Still not pulling away. Byron back to fourth. Top five has not changed much here in stage one. Now we're pushing up the track a little bit. Looks like we'll be okay. I think that may be Gilliland and LaJoy hanging off the back of the pack again, but we should get to the end of the stage before we catch them. Last lap of stage one. Harvick is right there, so we're gonna wanna hold the bottom the best we can. Looks like we might actually take the green and white checkered flag for once to win a stage off of turn four. Harvick with a run to the outside, but nowhere to go with it. We will win stage one in Las Vegas. 
but not by much. And the AI are right there. We are not pulling away by any means. So that's good, at least for competition's sake the rest of the way. All right. Going green to start stage number two. Kevin Harvick on our outside. And away we go. Great restart as we've been getting all weekend, all season long to this point. We haven't gotten the, ah, we haven't gotten those bad restarts for absolutely no reason, but we did get a little bit of frame lag there, which certainly doesn't help matters. So lap one of stage two won't be as good as it could have been. Thirty-six laps to go here in stage number two. Will the AI finally find a way past us? I think if a couple of them got on us, that could be a problem as we're going to hit the apron. Harvick would have run, but then they cut down to the bottom. I mean, they just kill their run just to follow me, and I don't know if they're trying to get a draft and then they can't do anything, as here comes Denny Hamlin. Hamlin had a little bit of a dive to the inside, but we were down low enough to the point that it didn't matter. Brad Kozlowski is a new name inside the top five. Another guy top ten in points. Hamlin and Elliott are in the top 10 in points. We are not. Harvick is not. Kozlowski is not. Kevin Harvick had a pretty miserable first two races of the season. He's clamoring for old Atlanta back. And so am I. I mean, even if they put the next-gen cars on Atlanta and just made them race like old Atlanta, it would have been better than what they did. Hamlin with a move to the outside, nowhere to go. And no help, but we're up the track a little bit. Austin Sindrick inside the top five now. Here's a move for Harvick, he had a nice look. Oh, not going to be a great entry here. There goes Harvick. Will we have a run down the back straightaway? The Nellis straightaway. For the moment, yes, but we can't clear. I like our car in the middle lane even still. Still able to get a good run off the corner. Oh, boy. Harvick just can't be happy with where he is. And he finally gives up. Oh, actually, he got uh, pressure from the inside from Austin Sindrick that forced him to back out a little bit. A couple of angry white Fords behind our white Chevy. Bucket all over the place. Single file in behind us for the time being. Can't imagine it'll stay that way. Elliott's dropped out of the top five. Byron now back in it. bit low. 
scrubbed the apron just a little bit, but it didn't really upset the car. In fact, the top four cars are primarily white, with Denny Hamlin back there. Up, shallow entry, watch out there. It's a long race. We're gonna make some mistakes today. We just gotta hope that they don't cost us anything. Tiniest kiss of the wall. Will we go green long enough to maybe put some cars a lap down this time? Presumably, Gilliland and LaJoy. That about end, Corey LaJoy. Trapping back there for the rest of the race. Which, with what we had to do to get a new point system up and running, you know, basically redo the first two races and then finish last in them. I mean, we need all the help we can get, and the fact that LaJoy is up there in second spot through two races, that's very advantageous for us. We're not going to catch him after today, but any little bit helps. And especially with Phoenix being next week and at least, I haven't raced Phoenix since the 2022 update. Um, I really stuck, uh, sucked at Phoenix in the original version of the game. So we're going to need all the help we can get. I mean, there's still going to be tracks that we're not very good at. The mile and a halfs were always the ones that the player could cheese in this game. But Phoenix is, uh, I really, I, I don't like Phoenix. And with this game kind of forcing you to, to drive the car in manual, I do wonder if you have to shift when it comes to Phoenix or if you could just get a, get away with driving around in fifth gear the whole time. It'll be interesting. Or maybe even fourth. I'm not sure you're going to need fifth. But I do think that's going to add a little bit to the strategy of just your racecraft in general. Driving style. There's that apron again. Boy, I really love the apron here today, don't I? Cloud a little bit. Probably sent it in too deep. Elliott back in the top five. Bumping out Keslowski. A frame stutter on the entry into turn one. That's not the worst thing in the world. It's on the exit or the center of the corner where that gets really dicey. And I'll tell you one thing that absolutely has to happen for the new game. Given that it's coming out next year, I'm fairly confident in the fact that it won't be released on PS4. There's going to be no need. The PS5 would have been out for five years at that point. We do not need to make a PS4 version of this game. Here comes Harvick. Best run we've seen from the AI all day. I can't tell if he's to the inside or not. He may have been, but we pull away again as it's now Byron back to third. Looking racy again as we are indeed catching Corey LaJoy and I'd presume Todd Gillen once again. Last time we were within distance of lapping them, the game threw a caution, so we'll see if it does the same thing here. Ten laps to go on the fuel. Nineteen to go on the stage. A pit stop is coming, but when is it coming? 
Also getting through lap traffic is where this race could get a little bit more interesting. As here we come, we got a run on LaJoy. Hope the 38 doesn't come down on us. He kinda did, forced me to get out of the throttle for quite some time. But LaJoy sets a pick on Harvick, so we get to pull away for a little bit. And actually, William Byron has gotten into second spot because of that. Largest lead of the day entirely due to lap traffic. It's the 44 car. I mean, if you have not seen a picture of the car that New York Racing showed up, NY Racing, whatever, showed up to Las Vegas with, oh boy. The longer you look at it, the worse it gets. I'm not entirely convinced it's not a show car. Uh, speaking of New York racing, we're going to get to the outside of Biffle here and hopefully dive to the inside of Loris Hesemans, and we do. Up next is J.J. Yaley. Yaley, whose car was up front with us at the Daytona 500 almost all day, and he pins us all the way down to the bottom. I think next on track is Cody Ware, who actually beat us to the line for second in the Daytona 500 when Joey Logano won by just a couple car lengths. All for those results to be wiped out. This game machine broke. We have built a somewhat sizable lead again. Well, really, for the first time in this race. With the lap traffic, but that pit stop getting ever closer. Just four laps to go on the fuel. Tires are actually wearing nowhere near as bad as the last two days. I think that's all going to come down to the fact that we don't have a custom setup on the next-gen car because we can't. Probably a more aggressive setup, I would imagine. And there's the caution. Well, no green flag pit stop yet. Going to get bailed out once again. Now, I feel like we just, we go full service. Two cans, four tires. With the tire wear being where it is, I wouldn't be totally shocked if some of the AI tried to get a little funny with it. Well, back to green from Las Vegas. It's William Byron. On our outside this time. 11 to go here in stage two. Doesn't appear that we got one of our better restarts. As the AI turned it up a notch. Now, it'll, it might be a tiny bit interesting to see what the AI do at the end of the stage. Only having 10 laps, 11 laps, whatever, on their tires. They may try and get away with only taking two or none with the tire wear where it is. Here at Las Vegas. And Lord knows they're probably a little bit better on their wear than I am. As the car feels a little bit tight. Chase Elliott's got to run on the outside. But doesn't go anywhere with it. Kind of dies out. <clears throat> Do you want to improve your golf game? Well, unironically, yes, but it's definitely not going to be buying any of those clubs uh, that we saw on that list. 
Harvick with a look. Nowhere to go with it. Block him off. That's a little bit tighter. Not able to dive into the corner as much as I was before. But Harvick just... I don't know what it is. The, uh, some tracks, the AI can just hold the bottom like no other. I don't know if they can't in these cars or, or what the deal is and why they're not. He had a run and just backed off. I don't know if we had it covered off or what. I didn't think we did. It looks like, judging by those uh, tire skids on the entry to... Uh, turn one there that somebody had the exact same spin as we saw in the Xfinity race yesterday I wonder if there's a ghosted car out there again we haven't been able to get through a lot of lap traffic to find out because we did see that a car did do that Watch it look the exact same. They have a tire issue heading into turn one, and then the reason it looks like they arc down into the corner even when spitting out is because they get hit. Brad Keselowski finds his way back into the top five. William Byron has not left much at all as of late with five laps to go in stage two. And even after the points debacle that the early point of this season has turned into and a self-imposed massive deficit to climb out of, we still have more points than Noah Gragson. I think my car in the simulated races found a way to get stage points. Or something, because we're not last in the point standings. Although I didn't think the game was handing out stage points in championship mode. Harvick with a run to the outside. But then cuts back down. Are they just being patient? What the hell is wrong with them? Oh, here's our teammate, William Byron. With a move for second spot. With now three to go on stage two. He was fast early, dropped back. Outside of the top five for a little bit. And now the 24 is here again. Only car really to give us a goal for the lead since we took it was another one of our teammates, Chase Elliott. Two to go on stage two. Elliott's still fighting inside the top five. Denny Hamlin outside of it for the first time in quite some time. This caution did not come at the most ideal time for us to come down pit road because we're in that stage of the run now where the car is a little bit tighter. It's a little bit harder to hold the bottom, which is really, I think, the only way the AI is going to get past us is if we just plow through here. We got a good gap here with one to go in stage two. Not the best exit. Does Byron have anything for us? Does not appear so. As long as we don't hit the apron, it will come off of turn four and looking to clean sweep the stages and the weekend here at Las Vegas. We'll take that, and now this is where this might get a little bit interesting because look at where the tire wear is. I'm going to take four fresh tires. I don't know if all of the AI will. Not paying attention, we might have just boned this race for us because I forgot to hit accept, and we did not pit. <clears throat> this should be fun. This should be real fun. 
52 laps to go, and we're going to have a hole to dig ourselves out of. Not yet. I don't know what the penalty is really going to be for us. Maybe we get saved by a caution. I doubt it. Fuck. We need a caution in the next 15 laps. Otherwise, we're probably... We'd, we'd fall for sure a lap down. And I'd imagine the AI with our worn tires and their fresh stuff are probably going to have a little bit of a look. Unless they didn't take tires. That could be the only saving grace. I know I need to take a little bit of roll bar padding and throw it out on the track or something. Here comes Harvick and it appears they may have a bit more speed. But we hold off Harvick for now. So this race, a lot like the trucks and a lot like Xfinity, no green flag stops in stage one and two. But we had two yesterday in the trucks, or uh, two yesterday in Xfinity in the final stage. Even a caution could still really screw things up for us. With their lack of ability to pass me, I do wonder if they didn't take tires. They may not have taken tires. Yeah, David Hoots, I know he's long retired, but put it out. Put it out. I got a spectator climbing the fence. Honestly, that was one of my favorite things about the Eutechnics NASCAR games is that they actually had uh, recorded David Hoots. I feel like he should just be a staple of NASCAR video gaming from this point forward. Oh, Jesus, we're bucket all over the place. Harvick with a look. Can't make anything happen. Yeah, I really think they may have uh, gone no tires. They don't have any more speed than I do. But the problem isn't really the tires. I don't think we're going to be in trouble there. Harvick with a look to the outside. Nope, going to duck back in again. We are inside of 10 laps before we have to pit. Damn, that was so stupid. Because if we go green the rest of the way, I think we might be boned. I think we added a pit stop that the AI won't have to make. Or maybe we can go just long enough. I don't know. Lap 91 of 134. Trying to do some math. I mean, I guess I really haven't paid attention since we haven't been under green. Just how long a fuel run goes. It's also a little bit concerning about gonna, uh, trying to get onto pit road with the AI all over the back of us. I'm not certain they're going to stop. We might get plowed over. If 
42 to go in the race. The Hendrick 123 is still on the cards. A little bit of frame lag. We survive. I will need somebody better take an updated picture today of the uh, the NY Racing car. I want to see if it goes to the to pit road, getting ready for the race with that uh, window still right in front of where the window net should be. Time to pit. It almost is. It almost is. I don't think we're going to get saved for our fuck up. Sometimes Mike Helton would, would call you to the hauler, yeah, for doing that. Robbie Gordon got busted, throwing roll bar padding out of his car. I mean, plenty of drivers did it, but there were some that were way more obvious than others. As there's the fuel light, the first time we've seen it pop on today. I'm going to push it one more, and it's going to... Oh, that might be a mistake. Uh-oh. It went to one lap right as we passed the entry to pit road. Hopefully we... Oh, um... That may have also been David Hoots. All right, we're on pit road. I thought that was still Hoots. Yeah, so we're going to have to pit again unless there's a caution. 38 laps left in this race. 30 laps is a fuel run. And the AI shouldn't have to pit for another 10. I meant to switch to the uh, standings and accidentally shifted into third. Well, that's not going to help matters. We are indeed a lap down in 35th place. We are somehow not last, but not certain that's going to help us. The only advantage right now is we do have the freshest tires on track to get through some of these AI. Gragson down a little bit low. That 11th place starting position for Gragson faded away just a little bit back down here in 23rd, but none of these are passes for position. We just we need a caution at some point, and then the only problem is going to be we got to be the first car one lap down, which I would imagine we are, but I'm not entirely certain. I know JJ Yaley was a lap down at some point. There is a slew of cars that just crossed the start-finish line. A 
pack of about seven of them. Okay. So we're gonna we're not gonna pit here. Or do we? We might want to, actually. So we're gonna get the free pass, I think. Anyway. We're gonna be close to the end. Once this caution gets through, we're gonna be, it's gonna be real, real close on making it on fuel. Let's hope for the best. <clears throat> we did indeed get the free pass, but we're back here in 35th. To the green, driver. And now everyone else has fresh tires. Green flag. Back underway, we gotta make a run through the field. 29 to go, so we do, I mean, it's tight. It is real, real close to be able to make it to the end of this race. Yeah, we were never gonna make up uh, a lap. That was never gonna happen. The good news is we've had pretty much the fastest car all day. So, whoa, getting back up through the field shouldn't be that hard as Ty Dillon does Ty Dillon things. Into the back of Ty Dillon. We actually took damage from that. Hopefully it doesn't affect us too much. Get out of my way, Hamrick. Who knows, maybe it'll handle better. Inside of Blaney, a little bit of a bobble. That's gonna make this entry fucking suck. He's trying to send me down to the apron. Making up spots, the leaders are still way up the road, and I mean, they had the speed to hang with us all day, so gonna be interesting. Also, still not entirely certain we're done with cautions. You never know. Trying to get a run to the outside of Custer. Oh, well, we're not done with cautions. But that one doesn't really do a lot for us outside of now we for sure can make it to the end with no funny business. Huh. Why are Harvick and Elliot pitting? That's strange. Do they know something we don't? Back under green. I should really try and get through the gears first before switching the uh Switching the standings around. Well, it looks like we're going to get bailed out for not pitting. Nowhere to go in behind Truex. Uh, pushing up a little bit into Suarez. Back inside the top ten. In behind Keslowski and Kyle Larson has indeed made his way back up into the top five. Started up here and then was gone most of the day. Time to punt a car. I already did that. Hopefully it's not making us too tight or anything. 
It's Austin Sindrick, the leader, as here we come with 20 to go. I wanted to make a move to the inside of Larson and backed out of it. Now we got a shit entry into turn one. Tyler Reddick in the eight. Should have a good run. Able to bite down here to the bottom. Now we're pushing back up a little bit. I do wonder if that damage is affecting us just a little bit. 19 to go. We got to run, but nowhere to go with it. We're stuck up here on the high side in behind Reddick and Sindrick. Oh, that hole closed up. This is not where I want to be. By any means. Now we've got a run on Reddick. Ah, oh, hole closed up again. I was going to force it three wide. Be able to get past here. Just got to wait for it to open up. I don't want to shove Reddick. Oh, the hole open. Can I get there? I don't think so. Don't have a run. We got off it a bit too much. Let me make contact with Reddick. Larson a little squirrely on the bottom. Changed his line. We're three wide. We're making contact with Reddick. Way off the gas. Now Byron had a problem with a car on his inside. On the inside of Logano. Let's get back to the bottom. Holy shit. I don't like it up there. Clear of Logano. Dive. Dive bomb to the inside of Truex, but I don't know if we're going to have much of a run from it. And he gets to slot in line in behind Kyle Larson and get a little bit of a tow. Just don't know if we got what it takes anymore with this little bit of front end damage with 15 laps to go. It's bucking all over. We're clear of Truex and now slotting in line. I didn't even see the eight car. We lucked out on that. to the inside of Larson. They'll have the run off the corner. Reddick coming. Truex on the bottom. Pushing tight a little bit. We're clear of Larson. There's no hole there. I tried. I think it's Reddick trying to make a move on the outside. Following Sindrick and Larson. Thirteen to go. We got one great race for the win shaping up here. We finally got a run. Still can't clear Larson. We got a little free as well. Look at a run from Tyler Reddick. And we have a caution. Another one. Still a whole lot more AI cautions than I would have liked, but such is the way of NASCAR these days. I mean, this might actually help us. Uh, our restarts have been way better than the AI all day. That was fun racing up there. Inability to get back to the lead was honestly kind of fun. Most had most fun I've had racing the AI in the 2022 update so far. We're going green. Ready. Been Ready. killing them on restarts all day. Might be doing the same. I'm gonna push Cindric out front here. Oh, 
Oh, I hit the apron. That's not going to help. Uh, maybe pushing Cindric was a mistake. I should have dove onto the apron. But now, with no help for the two from behind, I, want, I do wonder if he's still got the speed. Here comes Redick. Is he going to try and make it three wide? I don't know. Crowd the two. And we might just be clear off a of turn two here. And indeed we are. It has been a stage three of just battling to get back to where we were all day. Led most of stage one and stage two. Um, in fact, I think we led all of stage two. With seven laps to go, we are finally back to the top spot. The last 30 laps have been an adventure. Yeah, well, and it's good to see the AI actually fight a little bit, you know? After Atlanta, I did wonder if they even had it in them. I feel like mile and a half and... Um, two mile tracks gonna be where we're gonna make our our ground up this year no <laughs> no you can't in a massive deficit after a points reset because of the broken game self imposed last place finishes in the first two races of the year we sit 38th in the points, actually 40th in the uh, Winston Cup points. So we need races like this, and yet we almost threw this one away. Still got a few more laps to go to seal it, but even if we don't, even if we screw up the win, it's still a great points day. Remember the great points day? It's not really a thing anymore. Four to go from Las Vegas. Sindrick, Hamlin, Reddick, and Byron in the top five. Actually, where the fuck did Denny Hamlin come from? All of a sudden up to third. Bad entry. We hit the apron, wobbling up the racetrack. It might open the door a little bit. Now that's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate. Ah, one more kiss of the apron. Why not? Two to go in the Pennzoil 400. Denny Hamlin in second. Can they get back up to us? Reddick having a run. Off a of turn four, we'll take the white flag. And here he comes, Tyler Reddick. Not done yet. Gonna wanna hold the bottom the best we can. Through one and two, that's pretty good. But Reddick's still there. Force him to go up top. And off at turn four, it got a little bit dicey. But it'll be a weekend sweep at Las Vegas. Trucks Xfinity, and now our first cup win of 2024. I'm very happy that fuel uh, didn't end up being an issue. That would have been a massive, massive problem.
Well, can we kill a car? We'll see. Burn it down until we can't burn it down anymore. Or at least until I get bored. What if I just rev hit the rev limiter? Oh yeah, she's dying. We killed it. We finally killed a car. <laughs> it's just, it just died. <laughs> well, I guess that's where we end it in Las Vegas. <laughs> Parked it on the start finish line. I am curious when it comes to the replay. If we can see if uh, somebody had a very similar issue to what happened in uh, the Xfinity race yesterday. There'll be a caution on the entry to turn number one. As you can see, those tire marks are not there in the replay. So somebody, I think, did have a very similar problem. That was Chase Elliott. Was really almost the best chance somebody had of making an actual pass on us. Harvick as well. Harvick had a little bit of a run, but it wasn't as dangerous as Chase Elliott's. Yup. It looks to be the exact same thing almost. Somebody had a tire issue heading into turn one and collected Joey Logano as well. Loris Hesemans with the problem. And then our stage win. That, that exact same wreck happened in the Xfinity race yesterday. Although the contact with the other car came a little bit later in this one. This is us getting down pit road, dropping back to fourth place. Ryan Blaney and Bubba Wallace trade paint. This is another one of the... Oh, that... Whoa, whoa, what a wreck that was. Hold on a second. So it was Chris Busher that had the problem in front of everybody. He comes up collects Justin Haley, Bubba Wallace, and Ryan Blaney. Oh, God. Oh, there was a car airborne back there. <laughs> Jesus. The things you miss with no mid-race caution uh, replay. Damn. And then off the restart, the pass for the win, and then Redick. Not far behind, but the AI didn't give us much of a run here today when we were in the lead. Well, there we there we see the uh, at least playoff point standings. We do have a win, so we're locked in. Locked into the playoffs. Forces trade to the 31. That would that would force me to have to restart this again and take a three race points penalty. I can't replicate the results. The fucking game being broken was was a bad deal. And then I bought a hat. I mean, come on. I got to stay in the ally car. I bought a fucking hat now. <clears throat> Where am I going to find a colic hat? Our celebration. Victory lane in Las Vegas. We actually get the real trophy this time. That's always good. But we celebrate with the helmet on because we are not Alex Bowman. <laughs> Let's see. Fastest lap does go to me. Assume we led the most laps. Yes, we did. 93, actually, when it was all said and done. Austin Sindrick 
Started 23rd, finished 5th. I kind of wondered where he came from. And Kurt Busch's bad luck continues. Started 4th, finished 30th.